Good morning. For those of you who uh, have not had the chance to meet, my name is George Joseph, and I'm the deputy director of the, the Whitney and Betty McMillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale. And the center, along with its program on refugees, um, forced displacement and humanitarian responses, is the conveners of today's symposium. So I'm not going to speak to you about the content of today's symposium. You know all of that much more than I do. What I simply want to do in, in a very brief uh, two or three minutes is just to say a little bit about why it is that Macmillan decided to undertake this program uh, beginning really over the, over the course of the last year. And, and I frankly regard the spring semester, the term that we are just wrapping up, as really a soft launch for the program. Uh, over, the, over the course of this last uh, term, the, the program and the center, along with a, a series of partners across the university, have convened about a dozen odd events and speakers, films, uh, and we plan to do much more over the, over the uh, remaining weeks of the term, but then we'll also see much more activity in the, uh, in the, in the next academic year. So this really was just a start of something that uh, has, that really begins to crystallize a set of discussions that have been happening across the uh, campus for uh, really over the last year. So let me say a little bit about what Macmillan does and how it relates back to uh, this per particular program. Those of you who have been at Yale or those of you who have been in academia in particular for uh, know that universities by their nature tend to be silos. They tend to be uh, institutions where you come at things from a particular geography, from a particular discipline, perhaps from a particular, uh, from a particular methodology. And there are very few spaces where individuals and scholars and practitioners from a variety of different perspectives can come together and, and share uh, you know, their, uh, their interests. And that has really been what Macmillan has tried to do over, over its uh, long history. In the case of the program on refugees, of which uh, this is the first convening symposium, is that we would, over the course of discussions, we found that there are faculty across Yale, in the medical school, in the nursing school, in public health, in the divinity school, in the school of management, in the law school, uh, as well as the, uh, the faculty of arts and sciences, who are all interested in essentially the, the umbrella theme of refugees and the, and the broader issue of displacement. But, because of the way that Yale and because of the way that institutions like Yale are organized, it's very challenging for them to come together. Some of this is disciplinary. Uh, there are anthropologists and economists and there are physicians and there are public health individuals, all looking at it from different perspectives. Some of it is geography. In the case of Yale, our nursing school is on the west campus. Our public health and medical schools and the hospital is on the medical campus. And then we have uh, the, the arts and sciences and other professional schools on the, uh, on the north campus. And so there are not the kinds of opportunities that we would like to, to bring people together. And all of these were motivations for what, um, what really prompted us to think about how Macmillan as a university-wide center can serve that convening role. So what is it that we hope to do apart from uh, bringing people together? And that's going to be a very key piece of what we will do. Uh, it is our, our goal and our hope is not to subsume or take on what others are already doing Rather, we want to really be a platform to share the, this work across a wider spectrum of, um, of individuals across Yale, but also the New Haven and Connecticut communities. And in fact, there are those of you who are not necessarily uh, in the Yale academic community, but are representing organizations uh, working on these issues from across Connecticut. Over the next, uh, over the coming, really the next uh, weeks and months, uh, one of the things that we will be doing is launching a series of, of research programs as well as providing more opportunities for students. And we'll also call on you to, to help us in terms of convening programming next year. What Macmillan does, apart from convening, is that it tries to bring resources to the table, that whether it's in terms of supporting research, whether it's in uh, convening events. But the goal essentially is that we really want to uh, use the resources that we have, both intellectual as well as financial, to, to really to be able to uh, spearhead some of these efforts that otherwise might not uh, find a foothold at Yale. So the, um, and that in, in its broadest terms are, is what we are hoping to do over the next uh, coming weeks and, uh, and months. But one of the first things that we wanted to do is, and, and this is the reason that we're meeting today, is to have an opportunity for individuals from across Yale as well as New Haven and Connecticut to come together to be able to, to begin to share and begin to first actually frankly just meet each other because there are not as many opportunities for that at, uh, in, in New Haven or in, at Yale either. 
So that is really the goal today. We, uh, uh, as uh, the program was built out, uh, we had uh, arranged for a lot of downtime in terms of breaks and a, and a long lunch, as well as a networking reception at the end of the day. Uh, we've tried to involve faculty, scholars, uh, practitioners, students, again, a range of different people uh, from uh, across uh, Yale and New Haven who we thought would be interested. And again, our ambition and our hope is, is that this, this particular conference or this particular symposium is really an in-house event. But in, in subsequent years, our hope is, is that it will grow to something more, uh, something more fulsome that involves a lot of other, uh, others from across, uh, across these disciplines, uh, not necessarily at Yale either. So before I uh, step away from the podium and uh, introduce our first speaker, I want to uh, just point out a couple of things. The first is you will have the program which lays out the, the agenda for the day. Uh, and the, uh, and, uh, and I should, would not be, uh, I would be doing a great disservice if I did not uh, acknowledge a few people who uh, over the course of this uh, semester have really tried to uh, bring all of this together. So as all of you know, and you probably have, uh, and the first person who I think all of you have encountered in some form is Hanan al-Badwi, who is sitting right in the, uh, the very front. And uh, I don't, I'm not give, making an, a, a, an understatement in saying that uh, this would not have been, uh, uh, the, the, the way the program has developed even in, in its form over the last several weeks and months would not have been possible without, without Hanan's uh, efforts. Uh, we really wanted someone who could step up and help to just convene people and talk to people from across Yale, and Anand has been able to do that. And we, uh, and, uh, and I think again we'll see much more. But we, we need to start with by thanking Anand for all of our efforts. The others who I need to acknowledge are not in the room, but I want to at least uh, let you know that the website and the communications and other aspects of Macmillan's work was put together by Marilyn Wilkes, who is uh, the director for communications as well as uh, Lisa Brennan, who is the webmaster and web designer for the Macmillan Center. Uh, and apart from within Macmillan, the other people I need to mention are that they're, you know, again, how we've approached the program is to draw on people from across Yale. And there are uh, faculty and centers and units at the law school, at the, at the Jackson Institute, at the medical school, and public health, uh, in nursing, and a number of other uh, schools and faculties across Yale that without their support, this, uh, everything that we've done over the last semester would not have been possible. So we're grateful to all of them. Uh, and finally, we're grateful to all of you, those of you who are presenting, those of you who are listening and contributing in your own ways. And, uh, and what I would encourage you to do, in, uh, not only today, but over the coming days and weeks, is just is continue to give us your feedback about what more you would like to see uh, the program do uh, and how you would like to see it shaped. Uh, as much as we are, the Macmillan Center is uh, bringing, is uh, serving in this convening role, we also <coughs> regard our work as very organic. It is not, uh, we don't have a template and a, and, a, and a roadmap already sketched out. Rather, we try to be responsive and we want to be responsive to individual faculty as well as the, the interests of others uh, uh, ac across the campus. So with that, let me uh, say thank you and welcome. And uh, if you uh, have any questions about uh, Macmillan or about the program, do not hesitate to reach out to Hanan or to myself. Uh, and uh, and uh, you know, we, we really look forward to a, an exciting day of uh, discussions and presentations. So with that, let me turn the, the podium over to Professor uh, uh, Catherine Panterbrick. Uh, professor Brick is a professor of anthropology as well as health and global affairs. She holds an appointment in the Jackson Institute for Global Affairs as well as the, uh, the Departments of Anthropology and the Macmillan Center and the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. Uh, she's a medical anthropologist trained both in uh, human biology as well as in the social sciences. Uh, she, uh, in addition to the work that she's been doing with the program, she also directs within Macmillan Center the program on conflict, resilience, and health. Uh, as well as the Anthropology's program on um, stress and family resilience. The full uh, profile for uh, Professor Pat Panterbrick is in your uh, material, so I'm not going to uh, take any more time other than to welcome her to the uh, podium to give her remarks. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So it's my turn to um, have the privilege of welcoming you today. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, so today in terms 
of opening comments to open up the conversation in the room, I would like us to reflect together on one question that is important uh, to me, and that question is how we can strive to be, all of us, better humanitarians. Each of us, I think, has something to offer, uh, perhaps to offer to research or to practice or to policy. I think each of us has something to offer, perhaps as a teacher, as a student, as an advocate, as a fundraiser, as an administrator, as an artist, even perhaps as a potential donor. By being present in this room, each of us has declared an interest in humanitarian studies and in humanitarianism and refugee studies. So I think we're here to reflect on the next generation of humanitarian responses to the challenges that we face today and the challenges that we are likely to face in the future, <coughs> which echo those we face in the past. We reflect in order to grasp how we may de deepen our understanding of challenging situations and how we may seize on opportunities to develop a more ref reflective, effective, and relevant agenda for, making a, for doing things to make a substantial difference in the world today. It's important to note there's already been much innovation in the field of refugee studies. Moving forward, I'd like us to consider what we can do to be better humanitarians as researchers, practitioners, policy makers, or activists, or teachers. So I would like us to use today as an opportunity to make a difference in our understanding of humanitarian values. Now humanitarianism is, encompasses a field of research and a field of practice. And those two dimensions, research and practice, are intertwined in a context of exceptional suffering, violence, chaos, often failure, and discrimination. Humanitarians are those who save lives and alleviate suffering and support recovery. But I think that humanitarians are also those who think deeply about questions of our issues of suffering, vulnerability, and dignity, and surely that includes us in this room. Humanitarianism emphasizes, I think, a moral dimension of a shared humanity, a practice of compassion that extends to all human beings. And historically, this humanitarian ethic has been including, for instance, in Europe in 18th and 19th century, uh, social reforms that prohibited um, the use of torture, um, cruelty to children, the abolition of slavery, inhumane treatment of the mentally ill, reforms that fostered uh, participation justice for women and other disenfranchised groups. So I think my point here is that this ethic of a shared humanity has articulated in a cascade of human rights and social re reforms have propelled change, it's driven change in the fields of law, health and politics in the past. And I think we're po poised today to have to witness more efforts to drive and usher in another wave of social, ethical, political, legal, health reforms to address a broken refugee system, which is the phrase that Alex Zelenikov, former UN Deputy uh, uh, High Commissioner for Refugees, used in his talk last year, a broken refugee system. Fast forward to international humanitarian action in 2017. We have had strong calls made for robust humanitarian responses to address comprehensively the needs of refugees and the concerns of states who yield power over their lives and their livelihoods. We have had many academic papers that have been written on the future of refugee studies, but because this is a very fast changing field, we need to take a moment to reflect carefully on our agenda. So today, I think, is about our capacities for critical reflection and determination. Being a better humanitarian means that we work to define our expectations of what is the right thing to do in situations of suffering and injustice. You'll see in today's program session addressing legal issues, the challenges of current humanitarian system, the rebuilding of health systems, the everyday lives of refugees, and specific examples of humanitarian action. 
I hope we're going to hear today more about research priorities, about partnerships, innovations, and accountability. Because I personally remember writing in 2015 the introduction to an edited book on medical humanitarianism and sitting in my kitchen and writing um, that a plea <coughs> to inspire innovation, accountability, and relevance in this field. And I love those words innovation, accountability, and relevance. Um, because I love those words, I'm very interested in events that showcase examples of innovative humanitarian practice, effort to better communicate the lived experience of refugees, and address issues of suffering and dignity. Ways to forge new approaches to partnerships between research institutions and humanitarian organizations. Um, ways to share relevant information and practices. So today, I would think is about building a foundation for grounded, mindful, and constructive dialogue between science, research science, social science, and humanitarian practice. For me, being a humanitarian is to focus on the dignity of, the li of lives and the robustness of legal, health, and political systems. Being a humanitarian is to hold an ethic of compassion and care. It's also to insist on accountability in what we do and how we implement that duty of care. As humanitarian researchers, teachers, and activists, we need to hold ourselves accountable to producing or for producing truthful representations of people's lives and for creating better ways of serving them. So I think we're here today to learn from each other, to innovate, to build better evidence, I hope we put in place a next generation of ga data gathering work, partnership building, forward thinking policy, and teachable insights for humanitarian practice. And I thank the Macmillan Center for being a catalyst in getting us together for this symposium today. Thank you.